In this episode, we take a good look at the latest offering from Theory 11 and determine whether or not it stacks up to previous Theory 11 decks. Plus, we announce the winners for the Headlong Into Eternity deck, the Cohort decks, and the Knock 3000 X1 deck. All that and more coming up next. I've had a love-hate relationship with Theory 11 for years. On the one hand, they do produce high quality customized decks at relatively low prices, but Theory 11 decks always come packaged in gorgeously foiled, embossed tuck cases that look fantastic on the collection shelf. But the design of the cards themselves, with a few notable exceptions, almost always under deliver on the promise made by the boxes they come packaged in. In this episode, we're gonna look at whether the latest deck from Theory 11, this one, the Provision Playing Cards, falls into that trap. Be sure to stay all the way to the end of this episode for a chance to win a deck of Provision Playing Cards directly from me, The Gentleman Wake. And remember, for the best in playing cards content, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Released in July 2019, the Provision Playing Cards come packaged in an attractive foil embossed tuck case, as we've come to expect from Theory 11. The tuck box is printed on premium olive green matte cardstock and features gold foil accents and orange, beige, and black inks. The entire design is nicely embossed. The front reads Provision Brand Playing Cards and advertises the deck as being quality manufactured in the USA. The front features two golden snakes coiled around a sword and staff respectively. There are four small gold circles in each corner. The lower ones feature the Theory 11 monogram and the top two read Circa Trova, the company's oft-used Latin motto. There's gold foil framing around almost all of the sides of the tuck, and the sides announce the deck designer, True Hand, on a banner with a staff behind it, and reiterate Theory 11 as producer on another orange banner sheathing the blade of a sword. The bottom features the traditional ad copy, and the top reiterates the deck's name. The tuck flap is held in place by a perforated rectangular off-white seal. The back of the box features a representation of the back design of the cards, two golden snakes coiled around orange seals, bearing the Theory 11 monogram and the four suit pips in raised gold foil. Written in along the top and bottom is the Latin phrase, fronti nulla fides, appearances can be deceiving. And along the sides is the Latin phrase, guta cavat lipidem, which translates to constant dripping wears away the stone, part of the longer Latin platitude that follows with not with its force, but with its consistency. In a lot of ways, this is actually the perfect Latin phrase for Theory 11. Not that Circa Trova, their actual motto, isn't good. It's just if there's one thing Theory 11 does, it's consistency. And the truth is, if destroying the stone in this particular analogy represents a huge success, then Theory 11 has been content to wear away at it with a lot of solid, if imperfect, releases, rather than shattering it with a single massive successful blow. In that way, the earthy tones of the tuck box also speak to a more Spartan, almost military attitude that resonates with the idea of dedicated consistency as well. The colors actually remind me of those worn by the Boy Scouts of America. The inside of the box features a beautiful repeating gold foil pattern made of the T11 monogram seals. The deck features a bright orange colorway back design that, in contrast to the tuck case, replaces the pips with four convex diamond shapes in order to retain two-way symmetry. The Latin phrases remain, however. Interestingly, the poker border and by extension the front faces of the deck are not stark white, but rather a nice eggshell color. The off-white color tone is something I actually liked so much the first time I saw it implemented, which was on the vintage plaid decks by Dan and Dave, that we used a similar off-white tone in the execution of the first TGW brand deck, the Parlor, which incidentally is going into production very soon. So actually, I'm happy to see it used here. Usually with Theory 11 decks, I can be underwhelmed with the typical monochromatic treatment of the back designs on most of their decks. However, I quite like these card backs. I feel like the bright orange works really well here. I also found it interesting that they chose to go with a completely custom deck. 
The faces feature modern sans serif index font and great looking unique pips characterized by a squat design that are reminiscent of the shape of the curved snake bodies on the back design, most clearly seen within the spade pip of the ace of spades. The traditional red suits here are the same orange tone as on the backs. Additionally, the upper right and lower left corners of the spot cards feature the card values written on it. Oddly, the courts and the aces, which here include additional artwork in the form of gauntlets and hands holding up the corresponding pips, do not include the written out values. The court cards are richly illustrated two-way interpretations of important figures of society. Although the illustrations are restricted to the deck's color palette, they remain vibrant and eye-catching thanks in large part to the use of metallic gold ink, bold orange, and a teal blue color not seen on any other cards in the deck. Although I don't think the artwork represents specific people, there are some allusions to historical figures and some prominent roles of society, including a high priest, a musketeer general, a learned noblewoman playing the harp, a harlot with her dog, a a warrior maiden reminiscent of Joan of Arc and a stately king locked in a battle with a serpent. Interestingly, the suicide king trades his sword for an axe but loses none of his self-harming tendencies, seemingly splitting his head with the blade. Perhaps there are even a few bits of social commentary sprinkled in and open to interpretation, namely the presence of flames behind the priest. The deck also includes a pair of jokers, two jesters in color-swapped caps pressed into pillories underneath the blade of a couple of guillotines. There's a Theory 11 ad card and a color change double backer as well that perhaps hints to a future olive green iteration of the Provision brand playing cards. As for the handling of the deck, the cards are printed by the United States Playing Card Company and adhere to their usual excellent standards. They are crushed premium stock, air cushion embossed, and are traditionally cut. Pharaohs, fans, and flourishes are smooth and easy. I'll give credit where credit is due. Theory 11 has slowly but surely been stepping up their game, so to speak, recently venturing into fully custom decks and making better all around choices. The provision deck costs $9.99 and are available via theory11.com. It's been a while since I thanked my amazing patrons for their support. They help me to keep bringing valuable content and videos just like this one to you. I want to extend a warm thank you to my latest pocket full of aces patron, Richard Carlson. Thank you for your awesome support. Congratulations to the following winners. Danger Gamer 94, winner of the cohort playing cards. Eric Huang, winner of the Headlong Into Eternity deck, and Antonio Alvarez, winner of the Knock 3001 deck. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. For a chance to be the winner of a provision deck directly from me, you must do the following. One, like this video. Two, be a subscriber to this channel. And three, let me know in a comment below if you prefer standard or custom cords when you buy a deck of cards. To see why I think the Voyager deck was the most disappointing Theory 11 offering, be sure to click on the video that's going to pop up right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been The Gentleman Wake. See you next time.